Advent. Ready, set, go. All <laughs> right. Christmas. All right. So what do we have? I love this season. I'm renewed, restored, and reborn through the activity of the Christ in me. And I just love this picture with Rain's mural in the background. That was the big old, the big tree. Oh, do you remember the big tree? <laughs> well, we've downsized a bit. <laughs> but you know what? People walked in this morning and went, wow, it is Christmas in here. So it's beautiful. <laughs> it's, uh, now Christmas, time of lights. Friends, and that was at Trio's last year, and I'm going to be talking about that at the end of service. We're having a party on uh, December 14th, and that was, I believe, that was, was that last year, Travis? Last year, last year. Yeah, it was last year. Where's so, Trio? And, you know, I can kind of tell because of Russ's beard, you know. So, yeah, he had the full beard on the cap, so. And it's a time of Christmas pageants. Now, last year... My little Erin was the baby Jesus, oh. and oh, did she she kind of kicked up. I mean, we got good pictures, but but it was really funny how, how Mama Mary was trying to keep her calm <laughs> during the service. But um, but anyway, and then this year, okay, this year what we have is she's grown up. So I gave her these ornaments, and these little ornaments from Hallmark, they were, they were about 2005. Oh and they stomp. Now, y'all got to see this. All right. Wait, whoa. This, this is Aaron this year. Whoa. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're in the way. I can't oh. see. <laughs> oh, oh, about punching buttons and I know y'all didn't see her from up front and she's very cute in the fact, but but I couldn't resist that that back end is pretty cute <laughs> so okay well let's get serious so Travis would you join me to uh, oh, yeah we have our daily word we're gonna light the candle is, is this working uh, you want me to eat now it's working. Oh. Good morning, everyone. There we go. Um, I almost said my name. <laughs> it was like I'm in a meeting or something. So glad y'all are here. Thank you, Jeannie, for asking me to, to participate. Uh, Jeannie knows that I love Advent. Advent is this time of year is one of my most precious times of year as we enter this holy season. Um, so let's begin with the daily word. This is from the Paul House of that version, I believe. So my hope deepens to conviction. Faith is one of the twelve powers. It is the divine idea or principle. It, its uses range from hope to conviction. Conviction. As Advent season begins, I feel a quickening, a renewal deep within me as I embark upon the spiritual journey leading to Christmas. I may have hope for lasting peace, greater love, or abiding joy. But as I have grown spiritually, I have learned to look for these things within to claim them as expressions manifested from my divine identity. Once I do that, I may begin to see them manifest in my life. <clears throat> like my other powers, it's up to me to use my power of faith wisely. I have conviction that world peace, love, and joy are possible here and now. I am using the power of faith with imagination to envision each manifest each manifesting with ease and grace. My hope deepens to conviction. So this is the season of hope. The season of hope as we move into the Christmas season, into the birth of the baby Jesus, which represents that innocence within. And I wanted to share with you this morning something that's so significant with me. As y'all know, those of you who do know me, know that I study the works of Rudolf Steiner. 
And Rudolf Steiner gave a wonderful meditation called the Foundation Stone Meditation. In each panel, there's four panels of this meditation, in each panel you meditate upon for a three month period of the year. The fourth panel of the Foundation Stone Meditation begins on December 1st and is to be meditated upon every day for December, January, and February. The Foundation Stone Meditation goes as such. At the turning point of time came the cosmic spirit light into the earthly stream of being. Darkness and night had held its sway. Light, bright as day, rayed forth in human souls. Light that gives warmth to the simple hearts of shepherds. Light that enlightens the wise heads of kings. Light divine, Christ Son, Give warmth to our heart, enlighten our head, that good may become what from our hearts we are founding and what from our heads we direct with purposeful willing. And so it is. And now we move on to light the first Advent candle. All right, you up. do you want me to light it all in uh, while you're holding your phone? As we light our candle of faith, let us awaken to a new awareness of the gift that is ours to discover, the gift of the Christ presence expressing as each one of us. And together, we dedicate, dedicate this, this time of Advent to the awakening of our, our true nature, our true truth, 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 with all who come into our lives. lives. We, we express, express our faith in love and joy, joy and peace. In the scripture from Hebrew 11.1, 1, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Travis. So as Linda Martellowitz it teaches, it's not just five steps of prayer, it's five movements of affirmative prayer and we begin we I open God is I am I know what I can and I appreciate so in this special time of year let us come to a time of prayer this is a time of celebration and light and we dedicate this time to pray and reflect on the truth of our divine nature, the birth and every moment rebirth of Christ consciousness. It never ends. It's rebirth every time, every, time, every moment. And we amplify our innate qualities of faith, love, wisdom, and life as we began our prayer time. Truth and love and hope abide this Christmas tide. While I cannot see the complete path ahead, I trust life. By the power of faith, I am propelled forward. Through the gifts of hope and faith, the every moment rebirth of Christ consciousness will be expressed in my thoughts and words and actions. I practice seeing beyond circumstances and I behold the Christ light in myself and everyone I know. I place my faith in the truth until it fills my consciousness and becomes my life. It's that quality of energy that is me. I am. I appreciate this annual celebration of light, of faith, peace, love, and joy. I am grateful to share my celebration with this community on this Advent journey. I walk in faith and in the stillness I find peace and joy. I choose love. I choose this beautiful life. 
and so it is. I played that last night and I teared up. I have played that every year for about five or six years. That, that's the most beautiful carol. It's, uh, it was written for Jesse Norman, who's no longer with us, but, and there are many performances since then, but hers is so moving. You know, I can tell, Travis, you were moved as you started to read your uh, meditation. And, and I hope you all get those moments in these holiday seasons where the love and the, the peace and all of it, you just feel it and it moves you because, boy, that is really the Christmas spirit. So truth and faith and hope abide this Christmas tide. So we just spent the month of November digging into gratitude. I, I really enjoyed that series, a good four Sunday series. And I ended with two mantras <coughs> last week. It is, God is, I am. And then also talked about waiting and letting and trusting. And uh, Travis helped me on this side. I put it together. To, and, you know, two triangles, and I thought, okay, Star of David, and mentioned, okay. But I really thought about this. I was inspired, because as I talked to people about, especially waiting and letting and trusting, I really got such great feedback, and like my son went, oh, yeah, I get that. And you can start seeing that activate in your life. And so, I think it's a beautiful thing to carry forward into this Advent season. And today we're going to extend the gratitude spiraling into that uplifting feeling of faith and hope because that is the first Sunday of Advent. Now, let's look. It is. Well, we notice and observe our world. And we see a lot of circumstances that aren't so great. But there have been so many wonderful stories that have been coming up too. But we live in that both-and world. We hold mourning and celebration at the same time. That's the way it is. Now remember, her is the teacher, wisdom is the lesson, and the beauty in that transforms. In all circumstances, we can sense the gratitude. God is. Well, in unity we have the divine powers, 12 powers, that we can look to and activate in our lives. And, of course, today we're talking about faith. These powers are innate and always available to us. And they can live in us as a living energy, not just something we talk about. And, well, at this Christmas time we have a great example of faith. Mary represents... Uh, the power of faith. She holds a special place in our heart whether you believe the story or not. It's a beautiful story how the angel Gabriel visited her and said, guess what? I'm knocking on the door of your heart and asking you to do something that's kind of impossible. And this news probably brought up fear and filled her with questions. But yet the moment she stepped forward in faith into that unknown future, she created a space within herself for infinite possibilities to be born. If you think of the story of Jesus' life and, and the courage that his mother standing by him at all times, and this candle today acknowledges our living light of faith. The light that causes us to forgive more fully and live more deeply and love more deeply. It causes us each to be greater than we could have imagined. Mary was willing to step up, so <laughs> it's a great example. Okay, now I am. Well, as Paul Hasselbeck said today in the Daily Word, as Advent season begins, I feel a quickening of these powers, a renewal that's deep within me as I embark upon the spiritual journey leading to Christmas. 
I may have hope for lasting peace, greater love, or abiding joy. But as I have grown spiritually, I have learned to look for these things within. I don't have to always have it satisfied by outer circumstances. And I can claim them as expressions from my divine identity. My hope deepens to conviction. That's a beautiful saying. My hope deepens to conviction. I am uplifted. Conviction is the mindset of faith. Living in conviction is living from a prepared consciousness and trust of the truths and possibilities that underlie the surface of the material world. Living in trust is living the way I would live in fulfillment of my heart's desire. Waiting, letting, trusting. Hope transforms and deepens to that faith and conviction. I love it that they put it together today. Hope and faith. Now we are certainly entitled to a beautiful, more peaceful world. But not the way that we demand it or think that we can manage it and that we can fix it. Those are human expectations and attachments. The joy that the world cannot give always comes as a gift to those who wait for it, expect it, and make room for it inside themselves. So we need that spaciousness in the heart. So this is, instead of this demand, instead of taking, instead of asserting and demanding, we have a surrender and a receiving. Now if you think about it, I love this image I read. Well, I guess you can chase a butterfly with a net. But guess what? When we wait, it lights on our shoulder. When we wait, that beauty comes to us. So Christmas can certainly be overhyped, over-sentimentalized, overwhelming, all of that. And at, but Advent can be a time of truth-telling. So, as Kelly Isola has described, Advent contains the truth of our weariness and our anxiety, but also the truth of relentless generosity. See, it's that both end. So we see the material stuff, but then we have these moments that move us, like that song, like the meditation. And we look for that. The entire season of Advent is about something on the horizon coming, something we've never seen before. It is a season of asking what is possible. It's an invitation to stay, sit, linger, tarry, ponder, wait, behold, and wonder. But it comes from waiting first, I believe. We at Unity in Little Rock, we're facing this. this oh, we're facing an unknown. Our, our building has, has been listed. So this physical space is going to be changing for us this year. And we don't know when. We don't know how. But we know that we are going to hold together somehow. We really are. And we're going to use this beautiful space up until the very last minute. Absolutely. <laughs> we may be doing a little bit of cleaning out sometimes. But that's okay. It's good to go through stuff. <laughs> but, oh my gosh, Travis, as I think about 2020 and Linda, you're here. As we gathered and Chris and we stayed and rain. And, and, oh, I'm just looking at all of you all your glorious faces and we stayed and we held together during that pandemic we just said okay let's get the computer off let's see what happens <laughs> and um so i know i know you're so resilient and we can have that hope and faith that hope and faith so 
so that's sort of what we may be waiting for. <laughs> we don't know. But I ask in a more general way, well, what are we waiting for? How can we spend this waiting time? Well, Advent is not a sentimental waiting for baby to be born. The Christ we are asking for and waiting for includes, includes our own full birth of consciousness and even the further birth of history and creation. Can we manifest a better world? We can't just, you know, waiting doesn't mean just being passive. I mean, there's, there can be, at our fifth principle, we like to take some action too. You know, in unity we say, I'm 100% human and 100% divine. Now that is really a non-dual both and world right there. How can that be? How can that be? So let's sit with this both and and, and claim by looking at incarnation because that's really maybe what happens at, at Christmas time. The incarnation of the Christ. The real gift of the Christmas story. So, it would seem that the crucifixion may have been the hard thing. That's got the good PR, you know. But really, that Christ incarnated? That's amazing. Because actually, think about it, it's infinite consciousness incarnated into this finite world. He had nothing to gain from becoming human, nothing to prove. And he just opened himself up like we do every day with his vulnerable heart as he went through his life, leaving him defenseless against all the hard edges of the world. Wow, that is really what it means to be human. You know, I, I look at Erin and, and she trusts life so much right now, but she's starting to see, oh, I don't always get it the way I want it. And, you know, and you just, you wonder how long is she going to be in this beautiful, naive state of just trusting? Because you know that the, to be human is to hit the hard edges. To hit the hard edges. And what we know is that the Christ Spirit has always, always been in this world or been manifested. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. That's a pretty amazing thing. It became flesh and dwelled among us to show us. The Christ is the divine idea that contains all ideas. That's what they say in the heart-centered metaphysics. It abides in each person. As Charles Fillmore said, each person must look to the indwelling Christ in order to recognize their divine origin and birth. And that's really kind of what, it, what we're about. We're trying to claim that 100% divinity. You know, all world religions have a way shore. Each one witnesses in some particular way divine fullness. But I got, but as I was reading from uh, Cynthia Bougeau yesterday, Christianity unquestionably holds a good claim to incarnation. The vision of God in full solidarity with the created world, fully at home within the conditions of finitude, as she said, so that form itself poses no pediment to divinity. Christianity, that, that's the one unique kind of thing about their story. And think about this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And that can take on many meanings. But if you really think, if the, in the beginning was the word, Christ was always there, the love has always been there. Now, at its mystical best, Christianity reverberates, reverberates with the warmth of this assurance, with the conviction that creation is good, and that God or the universe is for us, and that ultimately it gets worked. What ultimately gets worked out is the sacred mystery of Jesus' passage through the human realm as a profound testament of love, for God so loved the world. 
In traditional Christianity, Adam and Eve ate that forbidden fruit and plunged the world into chaos, or so we say. Original sin, and Jesus came here to rescue it. So from the beginning, in, the, in that setting, incarnation is framed within God's response to a mistake. <laughs> but what if we see Adam and Eve's mistake as setting in motion a chain of events through which the Christ would be fully revealed in the world? What if that were the way we looked at it? It's an original blessing, not an original sin. Instead of a cosmic course correction, this approach envisions the steady and increasingly intimate revelation of divine love along a trajectory that was there from the beginning. Okay, those fancy words, but just think about it. For God so loved the world in the beginning and the Word became flesh. Think about it. Think about it. That steady and increasingly intimate revelation of divine love throughout time. This is a quote from um, a, a Sufi text and um, Cynthia Bujon brought it up and I really like it. I was a hidden treasure and I longed to be known. So I created the universe in order that my treasure of loving kindness and generosity might be known. And Cynthia adds, I created the worlds, both visible and, invi both visible and invisible, in order that loving kindness and generosity might be known. <coughs> now that's a profound mystical intuition that our created universe is a vast mirror, a cosmos, through which divine potentiality can be seen, the beautiful, fabulous, endlessly creative beauty that can be projected into form in order to realize fully the depth of divine love. Now, cosmos in Greek really means ornament. <laughs> and, and, a, and a Dave, Algar got this ornament out and we, ne we couldn't figure out what to do with it last week, but I was really thinking of that as I, I, I saw this quote. Just to think, the cosmos is this beautiful ornament. Through which divine potentiality Beautiful, fabulous, endlessly creative. Uh, the world, the universe. It's so wonderful. So, the act of loving brings hidden potential to full expression. And we know in our humanness that there is a costly self giving in that love. Benefits are just great and precious. And the more we give, the more love is revealed. Mm, can we do that? Could it be that this earthly realm, not in spite of, but because of its very density and jagged edges, offers precisely the conditions for the expression of certain aspects of divine love? that could become real in no other way. I mean, you know, if we just had everything all, all divine and flowing and blah, 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 if we didn't have the contrast, we wouldn't know how great it is, would we? I know, Travis and I talked about the beauty of being human. I wouldn't want to miss out on the way that my senses can experience this world. I need that. I need that too. I need the, the funny foibles that we go through, the, all of it. And of course there are tears and there is sadness and there will be loss. It's all there, but it's so rich. I just wish the richness didn't have to include the, crazy, the craziness, the wars and all of that, but that's just what it is. 
if you think about it, Jesus' life was a sacrament. Now, a sacrament, that, mm, that sounds like a Catholic or Episcopalian word, but sacrament really means an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. And that's what his life was. He lived it. He showed it. It was that outward expression of all the grace and beauty inside. So our first step in following our Christ nature is just to recognize that incarnation is not about fall, guilt, or blame, but about goodness, solidarity, and our own intimate participation in the mystery of love that is at the heart of all creation. I find that message to be very helpful. Y'all know I always say goodness prevails. And, and, and I don't know, people can easily argue with me with it, look at it, pointing to different outer circumstances. But see, that's the waiting and letting and trusting. That's where it is. Goodness prevails. It is helpful. I love this Emily Dickinson poem, just the first few lines. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all, no matter what. Hope is our foundation, our mustard seed of faith. It's soft and sweet as a small songbird, yet it has, it has unbelievable resilience and endurance to withstand. Hope plants the mustard seed and acts as the catalyst for the wonders that is to come. That's hope. And remember, the hope deepens to the conviction in faith. So faith is the power to make the possible real. It's our very sense of reality that depends upon faith. It is the power that realizes, that makes images real. You know, we, we believe in, un we say in unity, mind, idea, expression. Well, getting to that expression, that's where the power of faith kicks in. And through our spiritual power of faith, we perceive the truth of wholeness, completeness, and enoughness. And of course we experience all those conditions that seem to limit our health and our body and our finances and all of that. We experience all of that. But in reality, we really are. The truth is, in consciousness, we are whole and complete. So at those challenging times, those are the times I can call upon my faith to remember my Christ nature. My div divinity is the love in my heart, the passion of my soul and the understanding that informs my mind. My faith is going to carry me through those hard times and help me believe that goodness prevails and there is a better day ahead. My faith tells me that rough patches are exactly that, temporary. Ah, but they can be long, I get it. But they don't last. They, they can't be sustained, that energy. So my faith reminds me I'm so much more than human. I am divine. And let the one who believes in me drink, as the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. So I wanted to re read a blessing on waiting, and forgive me, I've got to grab it out of my... So here's a, a blessing to end this morning. With every step you take, this blessing rises up to meet you. It has been waiting long ages for you. Look close and you can see the layers of it. How it has been fashioned by those who walked this road before you. How it has been created of nothing but their determination and their dreaming. How it has taken its form from an ancient hope that drew them forward and made a way for them when no one 
no way could be seen. Look closer and you will see this blessing is not finished. You are part of the path it is preparing that you are how this blessing means to be a voice within the wilderness and a welcome for the way. We are blessed. So let's take a moment for some quiet and stillness. Calming our breath. Aware of sitting here in this room together. Focus the attention on the center of your forehead inward. Breathing in and breathing out. Attention fixed. This is my faith center. And I bless this connecting link between the physical and the spiritual. Through my breath, I sense the power of this present moment. I breathe intentionally, fully. A whole body breath energizing my entire body. This faith center, the center in the pineal gland, it's, imagine it emitting a royal blue light. And feel the streaming of this blue light course from the top of your head through your body. Feel faith, enliven your cells. Feel the vitality, the power of life in your body. Feel the strength in your spine and focus and be grateful for the splendid order in your body working for this vitality. Breathe, flowing in and out. Your heart beating rhythmically, steadily, faithfully. Heart, the center of love within you. Faith is my ability to see what cannot be seen humanly. Activate this spiritual power, courageously perceiving a greater truth, a bigger picture than anything my physical senses report. I demonstrate conviction by living as love lives, as wholeness lives, as wisdom lives. I audaciously trust in universal goodness. So much so that I rest deeply in the peace of spiritual assurance. I'm resting. By my innate power of faith, I live in positive expectancy and center my attention on anticipation, truth, and love and hope abide this Christmas tide. I walk in faith. In the stillness, I find peace and love. And I choose joy.